It is here where we stop our historical journey to induct one of our early builders of this century-old organization. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Norman Scott. Norman Mackey Scott was born right here in Ottawa on March 19, 1892. He's known for his incredible versatility in sport, including figure skating, where he was successful in singles and pairs, seen here with his partner Jean Chevalier in 1914, when they won both the Canadian and North American championships. Not only was Norman a very successful figure skater, he also excelled at hockey and golf. His skill and contributions in skating led to the first Canadian medal design using his image. His skating career led him into officiating where he would become the first Canadian judge appointed to the ISU, and in 1932, he judged the World Figure Skating Championships in Montreal, the first world championships to be hosted by Canada. His competitive record in skating, his significant athletic versatility, his honest participation in officiating, all contribute to Norman Scott's induction. It is now my pleasure to welcome Mr. Scott's family, the Winslow, Street, Hupp, Mackenzie, and Graham families, and to introduce you to Norman Scott's daughter and son-in-law, Sally and Paul Winslow. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for letting us be part of this. Our thanks to Skate Canada and to the Hall of Fame Committee for honoring Norman Scott this evening. Norman was born here in Ottawa in, in 1892. He studied at Lisgar Collegiate. He played junior hockey for Coopers and Ottawa Cliffsides, who then won the Allen Cup. He was age 16 at the time. Scott became known as a strong skater with a fluid style. Graduating from Lisgar in 1910, he enrolled at McGill University where he studied electrical engineering and played intercollegiate hockey. As a freshman, McGill won the intercollegiate championship that year. From 1910 to 1914, when World War I began, he continued playing college hockey and encouraged by the Minnow Skating Club in Ottawa, he worked on figure skating. In the summers, he sharpened his golfing skills. 100 years ago, in 1913, he was runner-up in the Men's Singles Figure Skating Championships of Canada. And he was runner-up for the Men's Championship at the Royal Ottawa Golf Club. In 1914, it was an extraordinary year for Norman. He and his partner, Jean Chevalier, won the Figure Skating Pairs Championship of Canada and of the United States. He also won the men's singles championship of both countries. Norman set a record that has never been broken. <laughs> Being the only man to have won both singles and pairs championships of Canada and of the United States in the same year. He also graduated as an electrical engineer that year. What an effort it must have taken for him to achieve such distinction in three demanding sports while completing an engineering degree. During World War I, Mr. Scott served with the Canadian Army Engineers in France. He volunteered to be a flyer in the Royal Naval Air Service and in 1917 transferred to the newly created RAF. He became an, an instructor in 1916 and trained a great number of pilots to the air service in, uh, until the armistice in 1918. Uh, parenthetically, he was in France most of this time. In 1920, he won the singles and fours in the first Canadian figure skating championship 
held after the war. He then became a member of the board of the Amateur Skating Association of Canada and frequently served as a judge, as we've already heard. In 1932, he was the first Canadian judge appointed by the ISU and judged the World Figure Skating Championships held in Montreal. He married that year, acquiring not only a wife, but a five-year-old stepson, whose son is over here. <laughs> So he acquired that year not only a wife, but that five-year-old stepson, and on Christmas Day 1933, his daughter Sally was born, and she's been my wife for 58 years. In the years between the two world wars, he continued doing volunteer work in figure skating and competing as an amateur golfer. He played in Canada, the U.S., and Britain, captained a number of teams, and won many competitions. He was an active cross-country skier. On many weekends, he and other volunteers took the train from Montreal up to the Laurentian Mountains near saint Adele, saint Agathe, saint javit and uh, they would cut trails of ski for skiing that are still used today. He developed an interest in art and fell in love with the scenery in, in the Lower St. Lawrence region around Bay St. Paul, where he and several artist friends made annual trips to paint local scenery. He won his first final club championship at Royal Montreal in 1938. That was six championships he won at that club, having competed at a high level in three sports for 30 years. In World War II, Norman was overage for active service but he did volunteer work helping the U.S. Navy office in Montreal develop Canadian suppliers. Norman kept in touch with his RAF friends from the First World War. Returning to Canada early in 1919, he brought home a bottle of fine brandy. Probably not the only one to do so. <laughs> uh, he and his friends decided that they would drink a toast to the departed whenever one of them died. On each occasion, normally, Norman carefully recorked the bottle, which he was afraid would uh, be allowed to evaporate, uh, using wax to seal the aging cork. When he died in 1981 at age 90, he was the last of his line. After his funeral, we opened the 60-year-old bottle for the last time and drank a final toast to an extraordinary man. He loved the challenges of sport, flying, and painting, and he had the determination and patience to excel in whatever he undertook. Today we celebrate his many accomplishments and contributions to the advancement of Canadian figure skating. Thank you, Sally and Paul, for giving us such a wonderful snapshot of your father. I would now ask Chair of the Hall of Fame, Ann Shaw, and our President, Benoit Lavoie, to come to the stage for the unveiling of the portrait of Norman Scott, which will now hang in the Hall of Fame gallery in the Skate Canada National Office here in Ottawa. While everybody is celebrating here, I would like to, on behalf of Skate Canada, it is indeed an honor to welcome into the Hall of Fame, Mr. Norman 
Scott. Right here with the portrait. We're doing a little choreography here. Come on in, Debbie. No, no, no. Yeah, over there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 